Okay, so now we just program the um, demo slot right here. You could see as I was using uh, keystrokes Q, W, E, R, and then A for everything, I could program my whole routine and I did it in one shot. Now, usually you can do this, I tend to do this in one shot, it makes it easier for me. But you can just as easily turn off all, every channel except for one and program only one at a time. Now the cool thing is too, let's say if you were programming, um, let's say you're programming and then you messed up something on the fin really bad. You can turn all these off, so you can make uh, turn these guys off and then hit clear active. Since fin is the only one active, it will completely erase that and you can go back in and once that's you know active you could go back in and reprogram that just as you wish so it makes it a little easier so we, we make it so that yeah you can't really get in and do any nitty-gritty adjustments at the moment perhaps future versions will allow you to do this at the moment but at least for right now we do allow you to go back and redo it if you want to um, another thing I did not show was a spectrum analyzer you can play with that it, it'll show you the um, the sound waves coming as they go, but they're not necessarily needed. I just tend to look at this stuff, or I just know my track really, really well. Now, I will say there's one caveat to programming all this lights to the music. Rule of thumb is, especially if it's your first few times, use more lights than you think. So you could see here in the beginning, I did a lot, I had a lot of lights, and then I grew into having less lights on and less lights on. Flying with your lights flashing on their own is very, very different from flying normally. So make sure you've always got more lights than what you'd need. Now we've created the OS button. The OS button, I'll let you figure out what it stands for. The OS button, once you flip your switch down to get it into your sequence mode, and your, while your switch is down, it's going to run in its sequence mode. Now if you ever get in trouble, you flip your switch up, all your lights turn on. So that we made that just in case you get a little carried away here in the music mode. It looks really cool tapping the keys to the music, but sometimes people can get carried away. So now, once again, I'll save the project just to make sure. Save it on my desktop. Yes, we'll replace it. Wonderful. Now, here's the coolest part about it. I go to my model lighting layout. So I'm going to minimize that. So we're going to have a button eventually in the final, final software where you can select between airplane and helicopter. Help. Helicopter is loaded by default because I'm a heli guy. And so what you're going to be able to do is draw your channel. So before, you see canopy, low canopy, tail boom, tail fin. So I'm going to draw them on my canopy exactly like to the, how they should be. So channel 1 is my canopy. I'll just kind of represent it with, uh, I don't know, some lights here. Channel 2 is my low canopy. It's usually, you know, right around here. Channel 3 is my boom. So I'll just draw it like this. It's just like Microsoft Paint. Just sit there and paint your picture. And channel 4 is always my fin. So now, this is the coolest part about it. So we're going to go back and we're going to click play in demo mode. So now I can go back in real time and watch my routine. So this is going to be a little snippet of my routine. Dalcon has been activated. Begin synchronization. Three, two, one. So the coolest part about this is I don't need to plug in my Dalcon. I don't need to do anything. Like I said, I can program this at home. I can program it on my way to the field at a fun fly. I can change it as many times as I want. And the beauty is I can sit here and I can watch it go exactly to the music without even plugging in a helicopter or doing anything. So then we can also fast forward through here and we can see it um, going. And then on your real-time playback, you can see your channels hopping and skipping right through here. So it's pretty wild. It allow, it's very, very powerful. allows you to do lots of things. Um, the biggest thing about, the, the coolest part about this is the fact that it's so easy to bring in a new project, bring in a new song, um, and create something on the fly. So this was a two-minute song, and I did that whole thing in two minutes. Now, usually I spend a little bit more time on my routines, but for the most part, I just kind of do, uh, just fly through it one time, one shot, and call it a day. So this is version one of the Dalcon Light Link. We hope to have lots of more cool features and whatnot coming out later, um, but this is just a very good overview here. 
I'm going to leave you off with the last thing in our music mode. Once your song has completely finished, all your lights will turn on. So let's say if you're flying around and your original intention was to land, but everybody's egging you on to go do a real high auto, it's okay. As soon as your program's over, it, all your lights are going to turn on. Or you can flip your OS button all the way up and your lights will just stay on until you unplug the Dalcon. So this is it right here. This is Dalcon Lightlink version 1.0. Okay, now that we've completely programmed our routine, we've drawn out our uh, channel mapping and everything on our helicopter, we're ready to finally export it to the Dalcon. So as you can see in the top left, you might not be able to read it, where it says Dalcon light like not found. It's red right now. When the top left button is red, that means it does not see a Dalcon. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in via the supplied USB cable. So I'm going to plug it into the USB mm -hmm. port in the side. And it says searching for Dalcon now in orange lettering, in an orange background. And now it's going to pop up green and say Dalcon Light Link Connected. Wonderful. Now you can also see here my Export to Dalcon button is clickable before it was not. So simply all I do is click the button. At the top you can see Download Progress as the bar. Bam. It just pushed it right to the Dalcon. We're all done. So now I'm going to unplug it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab my radio. I'm going to plug in my battery. And I'm going to show you exactly how to trigger it and exactly what we're looking for here. So does this look familiar? Should look like the little picture that you get to draw on once you're done programming a light link. So now that I'm done, I've got my helicopter here. Um, I've got my program set up and everything. Now I've plugged my Dalcon into um, one of my channels here in my receiver and I programmed it to this switch right here. So all I have to do is put it in the up position. Then I plug in my battery. Now I see two solid lights. I see a green light and I see a red light. The green light means it's got power. As soon as you plug it in, you'll see the green light. Give it a second or two, then the red light will pop up that says, hey, I'm ready to run the program. As soon as I flip the switch down, it's going to begin the program. So we're going to begin the music. And when the beep sounds, I'm going to flip my switch down. Dalcon has been activated. Begin the synchronization. Three, two, one. So I press it down perfectly in time. So as it's playing through, you can see it's going perfectly through the song like it did in the computer. So the beauty of it is the fact that we can fly around and everything's perfectly kept in time. Now you always want to bench check it first. Always, always, always make sure it's good. You can adjust your green slider, you can adjust your fine tuning to make sure the switch is perfectly thrown at the right time. Now if I ever get in trouble, you can hit the OS button. So right now my switch is in the down position. I can flip it up and notice all my lights stay on. Everything completely stays on. Now the sequence is still running in the background, so at any given time I can go back and it's perfectly with the music. So once the Dalcon's done, it's going to finish its program. Once it's finished, all the lights will stay on and you're done. Alright, so when it comes time to hook up your LEDs, you split your wire apart from your red and your white, that's plus and minus. You look, we're going to plug it into channel 1, you have your plus and minus there. These little castle looking things just pull up, they expose a hole which you can stick it into. Make sure you line up the red plus with the red plus there. Stick it all the way in and make sure you get it all the way to the back. And then just firm pressure down, and you can hear snap as it goes in. And now it's made a very good connection, very tight.